everyone! Unless you've been here to our zoo, you wouldn't know that we have a couple of venomous lizards here at Snake Discovery. So today we are going to introduce you to one of them. We're going to talk all about the Gila Monster today. Before we get started, we want to make one more quick announcement that we are going to be at the NARBC in St. Louis, Missouri next weekend, April 30th slash May 1st. And just like the Tinley shows, we have a dress theme. The theme for the St. Louis show is funky hats. The first 50 people to find us at the show, and we're going to have tables at this one. We're going to be vending, so we won't be terribly hard to find. First 50 people to find us on Saturday when it opens to the public. After public opening, not, not VIP. early bird. Yep, during public opening, which I think is 10 a.m. on Saturday, first 50 people to find us while also wearing a funky hat. And we're not talking baseball cap, we're not talking beanie, we're not talking a headband, we're talking a crazy hat that you yeah. would not normally... Like this Bidoof. Like a Bidoof This is a hat. perfect one. Like something you wouldn't normally wear. Yeah. indoors. We're looking for crazy hats and the first 50 people to find us while wearing one will get this limited edition ball python wearing a funky hat pin created or designed by our good friend Amanda right here in Minnesota. So yeah we're gonna go go to St. Louis. It's gonna be a great show. We hope to see you there and we hope to see your funky hats. Okay now let's start learning about Gila monsters. This is Sheila the Gila and their scientific name is Heloderma suspectum. The Gila monster gets its name from the Gila River Basin where they used to be very commonly seen, but unfortunately due to habitat loss and killing of the Gila monster because people are scared of them, their populations are rapidly declining. But we'll get into that a little bit later. Not only is the Gila monster the only venomous lizard in the United States, it's also the largest species of lizard we have in the U.S. These grow to 20 to 22-ish inches long, including their tail. So Sheila here is uh, probably around 16 inches, give or take so she has a little bit of growing still to do, but we would call her still a young adult. We actually don't know if she is a female for sure. It's really hard to determine the sex of a Gila monster, but generally males have a blockier and more triangular shaped head, whereas females heads are a little bit more on the slimmer side. So that's why we are very much looking forward to when Rare Genetics offers shed skin testing in order to determine the sex of Gila monsters. Gila monsters are native to Arizona and Mexico, and the very southernmost tip of California. Their preferred environment would be desert scrublands and grasslands, and essentially they just like it hot and dry. These are desert dwellers. However, even if you live in Arizona, you probably haven't seen many, if any, of these because they spend like 90 to 95 percent of their time in burrows underground, actually. If you do see a Gila monster in the wild and you live in Arizona, do not touch it. They are insanely protected, and sometimes the DNR will even plant Gila monsters near the road to try to catch people stealing these guys, which is actually a good thing because they are taken from the wild so much illegally that they need all the help and protection they can get. So if you see one, admire it from a distance. You can take pictures of it, but don't touch it. Sheila here is a captive bred Gila monster, and we actually have her lineage and all of her paperwork that uh, actually lead back to a zoo, right? Yes. Is it San Diego? I think so. Yeah, I think uh, her lineage actually originated at the San Diego Zoo, which was the first zoo to successfully breed Gila monsters in captivity back in the 60s, if I remember correctly. As you can see, Gila monsters are a very sturdy lizard with a very blocky head. They have a pretty stout face. It kind of ends abruptly. It's a, they're kind of like bulldogs of the lizard world. They also have a bumpy texture and they feel kind of like a bead mat or a diamond painting. And that isn't just because of normal scales. These guys have osteoderms, just like alligators do. Osteoderms are special scales that have a bony base. So they're covered in all sorts of little tiny little itty bitty bones that actually make up the base of their scales. Interestingly, another thing Gila monsters are known for is their bad breath. We're gonna get more into that later. I don't know if I wanna stick my nose super close to her mouth, but they I'll do are. It. You're gonna do it? Do you sure, wanna smell? If you, if you secure. All right, yeah, sure. Can you oh. verify? I'm doing it now. Not right now. Oh. Let's do it. All right, make sure her head's nice and secure. Okay. Yep, she's sitting pretty well. 
I don't smell oh, anything. Oh, she exhaled right when you stopped smelling. I didn't smell anything. <laughs> didn't smell anything? No. Okay. Well, her mouth wasn't open, That's so. That's true. They're known for having bad breath to the point where people thought their breath could kill you because it was so bad it was toxic. That's a myth, though. It's not actually true. They can't kill you with their breath. They're also referred to as living fossils because their evolutionary history can actually be traced back to the Cretaceous period over 150 million years ago. Fragments of their bones have even been found in Arizona that date back like eight or nine thousand years to Gila monsters specifically, not just their ancestors. Were they bigger? Uh, probably. Everything was bigger back that's in the true. day. So yeah, I, can you imagine a Gila monster that's like five feet long? That'd be amazing. We should breed that. Oh, mega Gila. Now one thing we haven't talked about yet is the fact that Gila monsters are in fact venomous. That's the reason why I'm wearing these bite-proof gloves and some keepers will free handle their Gila monsters, meaning they don't wear any protection or any gloves at all to each their own, but we do not recommend free handling Gila monsters because their bites are excruciatingly painful by the sounds of it. We here at Snake Discovery don't uh, endorse anyone not using proper equipment when yes. handling venomous animals. Always err on the side of caution. You know, better safe than sorry. That being said, thankfully there haven't been any recent deaths from Gila monsters. If you do get bit from one, it's gonna be like lava flowing through your veins apparently for a few days, but you're not gonna die from it. The last fatality was I think about a hundred years ago from a Gila monster bite. But still, don't risk it. Leave them alone and use proper handling equipment when dealing with these guys. However, the way their venom is delivered is actually a little bit different than most venomous reptiles. For venomous snakes, their venom glands are in the upper part of their mouth, and so the venom goes through their hollow fangs. Whereas for Gila monsters, their venom glands, or their venom, is uh, provided by the venom glands on the lower jaw. And it doesn't get shot through hollow teeth at all. Instead, the lower teeth of a Gila monster have grooves along them that the venom comes out of the gland, it runs along those grooves, and they don't inject it because I mean, it's just running along a groove of a tooth. Instead, they have to chew their venom into their prey. But although they're venomous, they're very slow moving, sluggish lizards. So they're not, they don't pose a huge threat to humans, even in the wild. And interestingly, the there's a peptin in their venom that has been found to help treat type two diabetes. So there's some extensive research going on using their venom to help benefit humans and just to study overall. And we actually toured the M Toxins Venom Lab over in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, not too long ago, where they showed us how they extract venom from Gila monsters. So if you want to see how the extraction process is done, they essentially have them chew on a tube. Go watch that video of us over at M Toxins after this. So the Gila monster kind of sounds like the ultimate killing machine, doesn't it? Well, their diet consists of mostly eggs and baby birds in nests and other helpless animals that can't run away or walk away from them. If you look at their legs and their movements, they don't move very fast, so they can't run after their prey. So actually, scientists don't really know why they have such crazy extensive uh, venom delivery and just venom at all. So if they just eat things that they can pick up, like it doesn't run away from them? Or I wonder just... if it was more of a defense. Scientists believe that their venom was actually evolved for self-defensive purposes rather than helping them subdue their prey. When it comes to swallowing their prey, Gila monsters can swallow larger animals than similar sized lizards of other species could. Their throat- So it's not the in between the eyes? Thing. Yeah, you can't use the in-between-the-eyes trick for their feeders. Their throat extends out and can swallow huge prey items, and they actually can eat up to 30% of their body weight in one sitting. And similar to leopard geckos, they store extra fat in their tail. So between their slow metabolisms, their ability to eat a huge meal, and the fact that they can store extra fat reserves in their tail, it's thought that Gila monsters can survive a year after just four to six meals alone. Next, let's talk about them in captivity. Some people do keep Gila monsters as pets. They're also kept in educational institutions and zoos, like here at Snake Discovery, but they do not make a good beginner pet, even in an intermediate pet. These require a lot of experience. They require proper handling equipment, proper tools, a secure environment, knowledge about the species. If you want to get a Gila monster because you think it's cool, don't get a Gila monster, get a bearded dragon and call it Gila or, or something. Or a Euromastix. Or a Euromastix, yes, there you go. Then you'd have the texture. 
sure. There are thankfully a lot of breeders in the United States, not a lot, but enough breeders in the United States producing Gila monsters so that there's less of an impact or a demand on wild caught, which is illegal anyway, but wild caught specimens being taken from their habitats. And these are actually an egg laying species of reptile. They will lay around six eggs at a time and the babies, which take like three to five months, I think it's five months to hatch actually. It's a very long incubation period. The babies hatch out at about six inches long oh, and wow. they are cute as can be as this big of a little baby Gila monster. And yes, they are venomous straight out of the egg. However, we love having Sheila the Gila over here at Snake Discovery and we feed her an egg, a chicken egg or a quail egg. We kind of mix it up once a week to every two weeks. And we'll also throw in an adult mouse occasionally or some chicken hearts or some snails, just a variety of different proteins so she can have a variety of nutrients. Her favorite food is definitely the egg. She licks up the entire thing. She doesn't like open mouth grab it. She licks the whole egg in one sitting and she loves it. Gila monsters typically live to around 20 years old in captivity. The record is 36 years old for a Gila monster. So that was a very old Gila monster. We have a frog who's gonna start chirping in the background. Yeah. Gila monsters, including Sheila, are mostly nocturnal. So they are nighttime hunters. And I think that's why they eat a lot of carrion or dead animals too. They'll come out, eat dead animals at night. And maybe that's why they have such bad breath. Maybe. That would probably explain yeah, it. That would explain why she doesn't have bad breath. Right, we feed her fresh foods over here, yeah. so that would definitely explain it. Let's actually end today's video with several fun myths about Gila monsters. Oh, I'm sure there's a ton of these. There sure are. I have three lovely myths to share with you about only Gila three? monster. Oh, yeah, only three. I'm sure there's more. I know there's more. Yeah. But we're just gonna do three here. The first of which you've already heard, and that's a Gila monster's breath is toxic and will kill you. Oh. Not true. Die? Yeah, you're gonna die because you oh, smelled no. her breath. Sorry, Rip. Sorry, no. Ed. It was nice That's knowing nice. you. Another myth. Actually, I have another one for you. We have four myths for you. This one kind of ties into the first one. Another myth is that they have no cloaca. There's no opening on the uh, back end of them. So instead, they poop out of their mouth. That's why they have such bad, toxic breath. That's a terrible way to poop. That's also a myth and oh. is not true. <laughs> <laughs> the third myth is that Gila monsters can spit venom out of their fangs just like a spitting cobra can. Not true. They have to very lazily chew their venom into their prey or whatever is uh, threatening it. So they cannot spit their venom. Can you imagine one of these opening their mouth and going with like all the streams of like venom? <sighs> They like spit a loogie yeah. out, a loogie of venom. <laughs> I mean, if anybody, if they were gonna spit something, it would totally be a loogie. It would be, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and last but not least, Gila monsters can leap several feet into the air to attack you. I mean, that would be crazy. I've seen her do that, so. Oh, she does true. it all the time, yeah. yeah. So maybe that one is actually true. <laughs> it's not true. They don't leap into the air to attack you. I'm surprised there's no myth that like, if you see a Gila monster and it's full moon outside, it's gonna come to life and kill you or like something a weird vampire like that. Yeah, type like a thing. vampire type thing. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me, honestly. Yeah. Because of all these myths, so many Gila monsters are killed in the wild because people are afraid of them. Not only do they have to battle habitat loss and fragmentation due to humans developing their native land, but they also are getting purposely killed by humans. So these guys need our help. We only have so many cool native lizards to the US. Stop killing the cool native lizards, people. Right. Since Gila monsters are now considered a near threat species. If you want to help these guys in the wild, you can actually virtually adopt a Gila monster through Saguaro National Park. It's a great way to offer some funds. It's $35. They're not sponsoring this video, by the way. They have no idea that we're even mentioning them. But you can spend $35 to adopt a Gila monster to help the research they're doing to study these animals to help protect them in the wild and start increasing their populations. So definitely please consider it. Go to Saguaro National Park's website and you can virtually adopt a Gila monster. But there you have it, some quick facts about the Gila monster or Heloderma suspectum, and they are just a really unique species of lizard. We've definitely enjoyed having Sheila here at Snake Discovery. There are a few animals here in our zoo that we have purposely not told you about because we want there to be some surprises when you come in. However, over the months, I'm sure will, or years, I guess, we will introduce you to a few here and there, like the rattlesnake and the Gila monster now. We are dipping into some 
venomous stuff here. Gila's are one of six species of venomous lizards, right? Uh, in North, in North America, America. Okay. one of five. One There's of five. four okay. species of beaded lizards uh, and one species of Gila monster. Which is in the same family. Yeah, they're okay. all Heloderma, yep. if I remember correctly. But no, we have really enjoyed having Sheila, so if you stop by her zoo, definitely give her a little wave, say hi to her, even though she's probably going to be sleeping. Yeah, she'll probably be tucked behind a rock sleeping so you can just see her butt. She sometimes climbs, though. Like, That's true. She, I don't know, she just climbs vertically in her enclosure, so I'm glad that we have climbing opportunities for her, because every once in a while she gets in a weird mood where she just wants to climb. So thank you, everybody, for watching today's video all about Gila monsters. I hope you learned something new. New. Thank you to our Patreon backers as well. You guys allow us to do so much here at Snake Discovery, including get some awesome species that we can teach people about. So thank you, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Bye, Sharon. Sharon. This, Sharon's our tortoise. <laughs> Goodbye, Sheila. There you go. <laughs> There's too many animals in this place with an S name. <laughs>